Hello, I'm Anthony. Over the next couple of episodes, I'm going to show you how I handle arpeggiators in Cubase. It's very common to find internal arpeggiators in synthesizers, but of course, for each one, we're constrained to that synthesizer's particular implementation. I want to take control of that process over so that I can record the actual arpeggiated notes directly in Cubase and I can manipulate them however I want, but I want to be able to get there via some helpful tools. Cubase has got some really nice arpeggiator tools built into it, but getting that information into Cubase as stored MIDI data is a little bit clunky. So in part one today, we'll deal with the physical process of getting those notes recorded. And in the second part, we'll have a look at a couple of tools called Arpeggi and Arpeggi SX, which come bundled with Cubase and allow us to create some really cool arpeggios. If that sounds interesting to you, check out the Patreon link in the description below or the join button to become a YouTube channel member. Fantastic ways to help uh, support my channel. Okay, so here's the SQ80. Currently, uh, it's got a monophonic preset. So if I press a C major chord, you only hear a single note. What I want to get to is the situation where I can do some sort of arpeggio thing, but rather than having to play all of those notes and record the thing, I want Cubase to take care of the logistics for me and give me a ton of MIDI notes on a track that I can then manipulate to my heart's content. So even though this thing is lovely eye candy, I'm gonna throw it away. We're interested in manipulating it inside Cubase. And here's our starting point. We've got an SQ80 instrument track in Cubase. Uh, and you can see there's a C major chord here. Now, when I play that chord, you're not going to hear a C major chord because the instrument's monophonic. You only hear a single note being played. I wanna turn that into a load of MIDI data. Now, the problem is that the SQ80 doesn't have a MIDI output. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky to do, but it can be done. That's what I'm gonna show you today. And there are a few steps to the process. The first one is that I'm gonna create an instrument track containing a plugin called Scalar. Now there is a free equivalent called Kales that will do a similar kind of job to this that will generate MIDI out data as well. I use Scalar too because it's just a, well, it's a wonderful program to be absolutely honest with you. It's my transformation tool of choice, but we're not using any of its fancy features today. It's basically just a MIDI transformation tool that's gonna to pass MIDI from one place onto another. What it does allow us to do kind of anecdotally is to transform scales so I basically play all of the white keys on the keyboard when I'm playing the keyboard, and I use Scalar to map to whatever key I'm currently in. Now, all of these examples today are in C major, so we don't need to worry about any of that nonsense. We can shut Scalar down, but basically any MIDI transformation tool that you can come across that generates MIDI out data is gonna do the same kind of job. One other track I need to create is a MIDI track. This is where the arpeggiated note data is gonna be stored, and so, I'm going to call this MIDI ARP. Always defaults to channel two, which drives me crazy, but there we go. So these three tracks are the tools we need in order to do this job. We've got the instrument itself that currently contains the note data. Scalar, which is going to be the transformation tool to pass the MIDI from the instrument onto the MIDI data track and the MIDI ARP track itself. Pick up your MIDI data, your chord, and put it onto the Scalar track then route the output from Scalar into your MIDI track. So here you can see Scalar 2 MIDI output is the input to the MIDI data track and any data contained on this MIDI track wants to be routed to the SQ80. So we've got a hierarchical relationship here where Scalar is in charge. It's the thing organizing and marshalling all of this data. SQ80 is the dumb instrument just doing whatever it's told. It's going to make some notes whenever it's told to do so. And the MIDI track is the thing that's actually going to do the communication with the SQ80. Now, as things stand, that routing works. If I press play, you can see the scalar is outputting its note data to the MIDI track. The MIDI track is outputting its data to SQ80. SQ80 is playing the noise. So that's step one. Step two is to turn that chord into an arpeggio. And we do that via the MIDI track. So if we head to MIDI inserts, I'm gonna add an instance of Arpeggi 5. Here it is, unassuming little thing. And today we're not gonna worry in the slightest about how to use this thing. 
Suffice to say, when I press play, these notes are going to get turned from a chord into an arpeggio. Let's hear that. So far, so good. Now, here's the, here's the difficult bit. We need to get that MIDI data stored on the MIDI track. If we didn't have Scalar, we wouldn't be able to do this. If you try to record directly from the SQ80 into the MIDI track, it's not going to work because the SQ80 doesn't have a dedicated MIDI out, but Scalar 2 does. Now, the way that we turn the output from this MIDI insert into MIDI note data is in the MIDI inserts track itself. There's a little button here called Record Output to Track. Turn that on. I'm going to move that out of the way because it's annoying me. <laughs> and now press Record. There it is. So let's just have a review of what's gone on there. Scalar 2 contains a simple chord playing static notes. When I press play, that MIDI data is being broadcast to Cubase. Any track can subscribe to, to receive it. The MIDI track is mapped to Scalar 2's MIDI output, so it's going to hear it. It records the data by setting this record output track button on the MIDI insert. In the meantime, it then outputs that data directly to the SQ80. SQ80 MIDI in. This thing is sat there completely idle. The instance of the plugin lives on the SQ80 track, but it's got no MIDI data on it. It's not doing anything other than waiting to receive instructions from somewhere else. Well, it's the MIDI track that's sending the instructions, but at the same time as sending the information to the SQ80, we're also recording the data on the track. Now, having done so, we don't need this static chord anymore. So we can mute that track. If I was to press play and leave that track unmuted, it would be basically like competing with the arpeggio line. So we don't want to do that. And now I can play that arpeggio back. I don't think I said at the time when I pressed record, but just for the sake of clarity, make sure you've got the MIDI track actually selected. It needs to be record armed. It doesn't need to be monitor enabled. You don't, need, you don't need to do anything fancy at all. The routing is taking care of sending the data into the track, but it does need to be record armed. And the easiest way to do that is just to select it. Okay, so that's stage one of the process. We've recorded our arpeggio. Now we need to understand what we can do with this information. In the next episode, we'll have a look at Arpache and its bigger brother, Arpache SX, and see what cool stuff we can do with them. Thanks very much for watching. See you then.